So in this alchemy leveling guide, I'm going to show you how to level up your alchemists in Final Fantasy XIV quickly and easily. Uh, we're going to discuss pretty much all aspects of leveling up your alchemist. And even if you have no interest in alchemy, you really want to level up this profession just because it is access to comfort zone. This costs 66 CP, but over 10 steps it restores 80. So it's like having an extra 14 CP, and you can use this on any class. Um, tricks of the trade is decent too, but you want to be careful about overusing this because when the condition is good, you get more quality with basic touch, and using this ability will take away stacks of things like steady hand and waste not. So you have to be careful about when you actually use this. So most people, you know, work out rotations about how to guarantee an HQ, so they actually don't use tricks of the trade, but comfort zone level 50 skills are very useful. And I will say that I think the alchemy set just looks really good. So you might want to level it up just for aesthetics alone. Anyway, so we're gonna, before we jump into the actual guide, I want to discuss a couple things for just leveling tips. And the first thing I want to talk about is what quality does for experience points. Basically, when you're synthesizing an item and trying to level up off of it, if your quality score is higher by the time you complete the synthesis, you'll get more experience points than if you just synth did you know synthesis on it right away and just leveled it up that way. So if you're worried about reducing the number of synthesis syntheses needed to level up, you will want to maximize quality because that really cuts down your costs if you have less crafts to get. Does that make sense? So if you get the quality score high, you might get 5,000 experience points for a craft, whereas if you just use careful synthesis or you know, your basic synthesis, you might only get 2,000 experience points for the craft. You can get the multiplier up pretty high by maximizing quality score. So another tip, real quick, is just the um, company issue engineering manual. You can see this gives you 40,000 bonus experience points over two hours. And this is really useful for your first 30 levels when you don't need very much EXP to level. You can actually get, you can actually use one of these manuals and go up to about level 14 or 15 before the single one wears off. You'll need four or five to get to about level 30, and that's what I recommend. Once you hit level 30, the amount of experience points required to the next level is so high that 40k bonus is not really that much. You know, theoretically, to get to 51 when once they raise the cap. 40,000 bonus experience points on 500,000 total XP is not very useful, so that's just something to keep in mind. And another thing to use when leveling up is going to be food. I recommend the raw oyster. It's very cheap. You get the 3% experience point bonus, plus you get a couple extra points of control, which as we discussed earlier leads to higher quality score, which leads to... You know more XP per craft, so it's really like five or six percent bonus XP in the long run. So it's worth using. Raw oysters barely cost anything on the market boards, so they're a good leveling food. And finally, when it comes to your leveling equipment, don't worry so much about these slots. Just make sure you have a good main hand and off hand. Um, so update those as often as you can. But for the rest of your gear slots, you really only need about three sets of equipment to get all the way from one to fifty. You pick a set around level 10 to 15, pick a set around level 25, and pick a set in like the 35 range, and then you, you don't need any more gear until you get this end game set here. So just something to keep in mind that will reduce your costs. So for the Alchemist, just like with any class, pretty much your best way to level up is through something called a repeatable leave, and that's basically leaves that you can turn in multiple times. And for Alchemist, in every class, there's two locations for getting these quests every five levels. One is going to be in the town where the guild is at, and for Alchemy, that is going to be Alda. And one other location is for a, ve a specific leveling camp. And all leveling camps are the same for each profession. Looks like I'm lagging a little bit. That should be the leave mate there. Okay, so I'll show you what a repeatable leave looks like. And that's going to be a leave where the required items are 5 for potions, or for cons equipment, it's 3. So for alchemists, it's a little confusing. This Bottles of Enchanted Silver Ink is actually not the repeatable leave at level 20, even though it wants 3. For potions and regents, a lot of times it wants 3. 
where the repeatable leave is always the one that wants five for these consumable type items. But when it comes to equipment, um, the three is always going to be the repeatable leave. See this three, this is a regent, so this is not the repeatable leave. It's only the equipment. Regents usually require five or potions, that kind of thing. Okay, so now that you know what a repeatable leave is, let's talk about the best one. Okay, so in the level 20 range, you could either make potions of intelligence um, here, or alternatively, we could go to Quarry Mill in South Shroud, and there they have potions of dexterity. They're about even. I actually think the one in Quarry Mill is a little bit better because you actually get more XP per quest turn in, about 20% more. And there's not really a logical reason for that, it just is the case, so they, that works well. All of them work well just because you can get all the regions you need for either recipe all off of the Alchemy Guild Supplier. So neither is too expensive. It's a very good um, quest at this level range. And so the level 25 quest in Olda requires goats, Goatskin Grimoires. I don't know how to really pronounce that. But this is really, these are really expensive ingredients. Dew Thread almost runs, you know, it runs like 800 gil a piece. Algoot Leather 100. Chance and Silver Ink is, you know, another 100 or so. This is a 1,000 plus gil synthesis. And since you need three, it's really not worth it. So instead, the one in Quarry Mill, which we discussed earlier, there's also level 25 repeatable leaves there. And those can use high potions. And I just wanted to show you something really quickly. Well, this, um, as I'm moving here, this is pretty relevant. When you're using the high potion leave, what you'll find is that you can actually go on the market boards and usually find high potions really cheap, in particular these HQ versions. So you see all these stacks of 99 are only 40k a piece, and that might sound like a lot, but consider that when you turn in an HQ leave, you get 200% bonus reward. So every time you turn in a quest leave, you're going to get um, 750 gil, and it's only going to cost about 2,000 gil to turn this in. And you're going to get almost the full level of experience every time you turn in this quest. So you could buy one stack of 99 potions and turn those in for you know, five plus levels and get almost 50% of your gill back. And when you actually consider some of the side rewards that come along with that gill, you actually only spend about 20k to level through this range. And you'll use so few leaves because you get bonus XP. So you'll save leaves and save money if you just buy high potions. And the problem with the high potion quest is that it does require mistletoe this kind in particular, which isn't always available in large quantities, and it's somewhat expensive. This does, one mistletoe will yield three potions though, so it's not too bad of a price. And botanists, this is actually one of the few ingredients that you can actually make decent money with gathering. You know, these are 250 apiece, and you can actually gather these. It's like, why would you waste your time doing the limited spawns, which only sell for, you know, three or four hundred gold each, when this is readily available at 250? Just saying. So, at level 25, Definitely high potions. The Goat Skin Grimoire is just way too expensive. And then at level 30, you have the option between Horn Glue, which is an Ulda, five of these, or three Growth Formula Gamma in Costa de Sol, which is going to be in La Nocia in Eastern, I believe. Yep, right there. And both of these are very expensive, too. You know, five Horn Glue, if you look at Horn Glue's cost, it's actually an item I like to sell sometimes. You can see that the cheapest one is 900 gil, and you got to turn in five. But that's a little over the top, expense-wise. You know, it's it's just not worth doing. Um, you could go the high quality route. You know, you can see there's not stacks of 99 running from, you know, 1200 gil and up. So, but again, that's 120 some thousand gil, and you're just not getting that much. And growth formula gamma. Forget about it. It's just, it's very expensive too. And it's just not available in HQ in large quantities. So you can try to make these yourself, but the Algoot horns are usually pretty expensive. You know, you, there's only one stack under 200 gil a piece. So it's just usually not a good, a good use of your money or time. I would actually rather, 
you'd actually get more experience by just doing the high potion quest again, all the way to 35. Or alternatively, you could buy those horns, make the horn glue or growth formula gamma yourself, and then just sell it on the market boards, not even turn it in for an HQ. So that's your option there. Um, at level 35, you have two options. Ulda is going to be poisoning potion. Not a bad recipe. And Observatorium in Corthus, so it's going to be the best one. It makes the same thing. And you only need about two synthesis to get you know, these items where you need them. Because it's five for the turn in and you get three for every craft. And what I'm going to recommend is to do the Observatorium one. Just because it's hard to get Formic Acid for the older one. And that's going to be Corthus at this observatorium here. That's the level 35 repeatable leave. You're going to take that all the way to 40, at which point you can turn in Lanolin, which is so cheap. And here's a tip for you again. Rather than make it yourself, if you want to save some gill, and you have plenty of leaves to burn, look how cheap this is. You can just buy stacks of this, no problem. And you can even buy stacks of the HQ stuff for not too expensive sometimes. So there's a decent amount available for 500 gill. But when you turn in one of these, when you turn in five HQs, so it's going to run you 2,500 gill, you're actually going to get 1,500 gill as a quest reward. So it's only a net 1,000 gill, and you'll get almost 100,000 experience for turning those in. So as a result, you actually want to take that leave all the way to 50. The one at 45 is a waste of time because it's either Mega Potions of Strength, which is at St. Koinix Find in Mordana, or Mega Potion of Dexterity, which, I'm sorry, not Dexterity, Vitality, which requires Pudding Flesh, extremely expensive, and the Strength one, Shark Oil, is extremely expensive, because it requires these two sharks, which you have to buy from Fishers. It's just a waste of, both are a waste of money. Stick with the Lanolin all the way to 50. Okay, so you might not want to spend leaves. I really didn't actually use any leaves for alchemy until I hit four, uh, close to 40. And instead, I just crafted things most of the way. So from 1 to 5, you can just go with Quicksilver. Now you can save this for later, but for future reference, you can buy Quicksilver off of Tradecraft uh, suppliers. Rather than make your own, water shards are expensive. And let me just find one of these guys for you real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Tra Fieldcraft Merchant. No, I don't see the one here. It might be over in um it might be in these vendors here. I'm not sure. But yeah, Tradecraft Supplier will sell Quicksilver, and they'll only sell it for something like four gill. There it is, Tradecraft Merchant. Ran right by it. So Quicksilver. Four gill. So don't make your own once we're done grinding. We're only doing this for experience. Once you hit level 5, we're going to switch over to rubber. You can buy latex off the guild supplier. You can take that all the way to level 10, at which point you can make fish glue. You can buy these coral butterfly off the guild supplier. And this rubber and fish glue, you can, you can actually sell on the market boards and get your money back. Then from 14 to 20, we're going to make growth formula beta. You can actually sell this at a profit. If you buy the quicksilver off of the vendor for four gill each, you can buy the jellyfish umbrella and rock salt off your guild supplier, only one water shard, as we'll see here. Growth formula beta goes for, look, this guy's selling 99 for 600 gill, that's the cheapest one. It only costs like 70 gill in ingredients to make. So you can actually grind on that all the way to level 20. Um, if you want to switch over earlier, I have it also, you can just make these jellyfish humors. You can't really sell these for too much because a vendor sells them for 38 gill, but the whole ingredient cost is only like 60 or 70 gill. So you can just craft these, buy these off the vendor, the jellyfish umbrella, and then just a vendor of these items as soon as they come through. Because you lose so little gill in each craft that if you have, you know, it only runs 5,000 gill to get the four levels. So from 23 to 28, we're going to go for Natron, and this usually sells for a slight profit as well. You can usually sell Natron for 200 or so gill. The water shards, you know, run 60 to 80 gill. The water usually runs 60 gill each on my server. Rock salt is, you know, a couple gill off the, the vendor. It's 150 gill of synth, and you can sell it for 200. You can craft that all the way to 28. So go from 23 to 28 off Natron. From here, you can use some of the Natron you saved, and make clear glass lenses. You can do these all the way to 31. 
And these actually usually sell for a nice profit too. You know, these will typically go for four or five hundred gil each. Uh, Silex is available on the market boards, so usually about fifty to seventy gil each. Natron you've already made in the last step. You can make a nice little profit there. Turn your last region into more experience points. Okay, so from thirty-three to thirty-one, you can either make horn glue or keep making clear glass lenses. Uh, horn glue usually sells a little bit better, as we saw earlier in the video. It's worth about 900 gil. You can usually get Algoat horns for, and the regular quality stuff usually doesn't sell for 900. It's probably going to be 700 to 800. But horns are usually, you can usually find a sack of horns available for under 300 gil a piece. So you end up making a net profit of about 100 gil per synth, maybe a little bit less depending on how fast you want everything to sell. The only problem is buying those horns in the first place will add up in cost. So you know, if you if you don't have the money to front, you can use clear glass lenses. If you do, switch over to horn glue, and we'll do that from all the way to level 33. Once you hit level 33, we're going to do the enchanted mithril ink, and this is not a very great recipe, but you can just vent, you can just make this, sell what you can on the market boards. But I picked it because the ingredient cost is cheap. In particular, looking at shards, and most ingredients aren't very expensive, but shards are. Everything else in this level range has lightning shards, which are somewhat expensive. Usually they're one of the more expensive shards, since they're available for, they're the main shard for weaving, which is one of the more profitable prof professions. So I like to, um, if you're going to grind here, go with Enchanted Mithril Ink to 37. Once you hit 37, you're actually going to grind on lanolin. Again, only one type of shard. Caracal Skin is super cheap on the market boards, because people farm these things like crazy for fleece. And you can make this from 37 to 40. And the reason you do that is because once you hit 40, you can do the repeatable leave I mentioned earlier. And that will give you all the experience you need to 50. You know, if you craft from 37 to 40, you'll have all the lanolin you need to get you through many levels through the repeatable leave. And after 40, I don't recommend grinding. Just stick to the repeatable leave. You know, if you don't have enough leaves, wait a couple days. Or buy HQ items because grinding after this point is very expensive. So if you want to keep grinding, I would actually just keep making lanolin all the way to level 47 because these crafts are all somewhat expensive. They're just too expensive to do anything else. And then once you hit 47, if you want, really want to grind, potent blinding potion is not too expensive. I mean, you'll probably spend about 500 gil per in regents, but then the shards are just expensive too. This is like a thousand gil synthesis. So I don't really like to do it. I, w I would much recommend waiting for the repeatable leaves. Think about it this way. Rather than spending a thousand gil per synthesis here, what if you were just to buy high quality lanolin on the market boards at about 3,000 gil for five, and when you turn in the leave that way, you'll get almost 100,000 experience points. Since it's a repeatable leave, if you buy uh, a grand total of 15 high quality lanolin, 600 gil a piece, that will only run you, you know, 8K or so, and then maybe 9K. And you'll turn that in and get 300,000 experience points. That's going to be worth so much more than this. You know, if you get three leave allowances every 12 hours, you can get 900,000 experience points. So it's probably about 850K off of turning in 15 high-quality lanolin three times for three repeatable leaves. So 45 HQ lanolin converts into almost 900,000 experience and that's only going to run you, you know, 15, 20k gil. It's going to be much cheaper than making 20 of these and getting not much experience out of it. So stick to the repeatable leaves, in my opinion. And really, that's it for this alchemy leveling guide. You should have all the information you need now. You know, grinding is great for alchemy, levels 1 to 40. Then, you know, you really want to switch to the repeatable leaves. So I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you take your time selling the stuff that I recommended in the grinding guide, you actually come out a little bit ahead by leveling alchemy. It's, one of the, it's probably the only profession where you actually make gill while leveling it up and still be able to level up really quickly at the same time. So I hope this video is helpful for you, and check out my other guides for leveling up, and i uh, see you in the next one.